The telecommunications sector finds itself at the epicenter of a transition from traditional infrastructure to cloud solutions. But beyond this cloud transformation lies an even more intricate paradigm, cloud native. The term is often talked about, but what does it truly mean for telcos? To delve deeper into this topic, I'm joined by Blake Shiver, Vice President of Global Cloud Partners at Red Hat, to illuminate how the convergence of cloud and cloud native can be a beacon for telcos. Blake, thanks for being here. And, you know, to set the scene, can you provide an overview of Red Hat's cloud strategy and how you're innovating to support telcos in the move to cloud native? Wow, that's a really big question, but I'll do the best that I can. So Red Hat, Red Hat's cloud strategy is really about creating an amazing customer experience in the cloud. And that would translate to a telco to be the actual telco customer who's trying to create services at the next generation for their customers. Um, we seek to do that by taking our platform, which includes Red Hat Enterprise Linux, our Ansible automation platform, our OpenShift platform, and our OpenStack platform, and making those available in the cloud to be consumed in a, in a cloud native fashion. Honestly, when we talk about the difference between cloud and cloud native, cl cloud is what people think of when they're just migrating something from on-premise infrastructure to cloud infrastructure. But cloud native is really, how do we make those complex connections that are gonna drive innovation on services that are built in and for the cloud? So taking Red Hat's very strong on-premise portfolio and making it a cloud native service portfolio it has been at the epicenter of our strategy. We also have a very robust cloud partner ecosystem. So we partner with all of the hyperscalers that you think of, the big names. And we also have over 1400 other cloud providers and cloud partners across the globe. And these include regional sovereign data cloud providers, managed service providers, and even we think of some of our telcos as cloud providers as well too. So a very robust ecosystem of cloud partners that's then surrounded by an even more robust ecosystem of system integrator partners and ISV partners and hardware partners and distribution partners. So Red Hat is really this big ecosystem company that, that represents where all of these different partners and ecosystem players can connect and ultimately create value for the telco industry. So how do you see the synergy between 5G technology and cloud native architectures shaping the future of telecommunications? Well, 5G is just like any new technology. Uh, any industry is gonna have groundbreaking new technology that they wanna bring to market. And in telco, that focus is really on 5G. So when you think about how do I get that to market quickly? How do I take the best, most innovative services that are available and bring those to market, bring those to my clients and create that capability of 5G as quickly as possible? And the best way to do that is gonna be using cloud native uh, development and cloud native solutions. That's gonna allow a telco to take uh, commoditized server equipment, build the network functions that ultimately are going to create 5G in a matter of, of days or hours versus months or years, and then deliver that functionality very quickly to their customers. So at the end of the day, to make 5G happen, I think you've gotta do it quickly um, in a very competitive environment. And so cloud native is going to be the way to make that happen. And what collaboration and communication mechanisms have proven effective in maintaining strong synergy between development and operations teams within the cloud native environments? So I really love what you just said about how you, we think of development teams and operations teams as two separate teams. Traditionally, that's absolutely been true. You've got two different groups of people that need to come together to ultimately create these new services for customers and for clients. What's happening and what we're seeing is with, with all these new cloud native uh, services and cloud native tools is that the line between development and operations is becoming blurred. So those two teams are coming together and able to work together better and better. I, and what I see and what, and what I think is really key is in the development platforms, that's where that communication is gonna happen. Development platforms might've been relatively scary for operators in the past, but today they're very approachable and they actually have very robust communication mechanisms in them that, that are designed to help these two groups work together more effectively. Fatih Nar will be speaking on the platform engineering for telcos panel during the cloud native telco summit event. And he'll go into a lot more detail uh, under, underneath what I was just talking about, but it all comes together in the platform development uh, space. So what are some of the top challenges and opportunities you've seen with CSP customers implementing cloud native strategies? Sure, I think one of the biggest concern, one of the biggest challenges is really security. 
So you have a lot of stuff happening. When you go into the cloud native space, there's a temptation to use unsupported. There's a lot of unsupported um, free, I'll call it. Uh, no, there's nothing, there's no free lunch um, in the world, but there's things that, you know, maybe like Linux uh, platforms that don't cost money up front that there's a tendency to try to develop on that. Um, that creates a lot of hidden costs. There's a lot of administrative costs and there's also a lot of security risks that are created in that. And when you're a telco and you're thinking about creating a, a very stable service with, that millions of people are going to rely on, that 911 services are going to rely on, that you know perhaps emergency situations are going to be based on, you can't uh, you can't have any kind of security vulnerability or any kind of an outage um, that persists for for any period of time. So having highly supported enterprise grade uh, software that all those applications are running on is incredibly important. So I think that's number one concern and that's where Red Hat is playing really, really well. Um, also around monitoring and addressing inefficiencies is another thing. That's like the second biggest trend that we see. So when we're running things in cloud environments, you get sprawl very quickly. There's a, you're opening up Pandora's box of innovation, which is a great thing for your business, but it also can create a little bit of a burden for your IT organizations. So how do we monitor that? How do we spot those inefficiencies? How do we leverage AI to do some of that for you so that you can quickly make sure you're putting the right resources on the things that are adding the most value to your clients and your business? Um, then you start to get into the, the next level of, of capabilities like vendor lock-in, um, you know, having a platform that works across cloud providers. When we think about our cloud business, we generally think about major hyperscalers. But there's thousands and thousands of regional sovereign cloud providers, of managed service providers, and you have new hyperscalers actually emerging every day, new players kind of entering the market on that major league field for, for that the consider themselves hyperscalers. So with all of that different choice in terms of where the underlying bare metal is, you really want to avoid vendor lock-in at that level. You also want to avoid vendor lock-in at the hardware level inside your network centers. Um, if you're able to use commodity hardware and then emulate or build the software services, uh, software networking functions that are going to run your next generation business on, that's even creating another level of abstraction around vendor lock-in that's liberating uh, for a lot of businesses. So that's top of mind. Um, service integration is also very important. We want to make sure that we're integrating with all of the services available. I mentioned earlier that in, in the cloud native space, one of the value propositions is very quickly being able to get access to cloud-based services that are very innovative and that can add a lot of value to your business. So making sure you're integrated with those services is very important. And that's some, some other place where Red Hat's platform plays extremely well. We're an ecosystem first uh, company, so the integration with different cloud services is pretty ubiquitous. Um, and I think maybe the last thing I'll mention is just around organization change and skill building. There's a lot of cultural change that has to be unleashed to really make this model effective. And so enabling that and enabling the build of the right skills, um, getting rid of the fear and some of your associates say, hey, I don't understand how to do development. Development, software development has gotten far uh, more understandable and more approachable than it used to be. And so uh, enabling associates who may not have uh, interacted with that type of stuff in, in, their, in, their, in, their has, in their past to say, hey, now I can actually interact with developers. I can interact with the development life cycle in a new way. That's building a new skill and that's ultimately driving that cultural change that we see being very profitable for businesses. And Blake, you know, with all of the elements that you've mentioned, it's very clear that no one entity can do it on their own. So how important is collaboration in moving us forward in maintaining and building and deploying these cloud native environments? I would say collaboration might be the single most important factor that's enabled us to make the type of progress that we've seen over the last five to 10 years in technology. And so making sure that that stays open um, and that that collaborative environment stays in place is very important, not only inside of your individual companies, but in, in the general community that's developing these open source tools that are creating the platforms for you to do this on. If I think about Kubernetes, for example, Kubernetes uh, only exists because it was born in open source community. And today it remains an open source product. And there's a lot of great competition and a great development that happens because of that, which creates options for uh, for you to, to be able to run cloud native services on. So uh, just think about what that's brought us to today and then how much potential really can be unleashed into the future if we take the values of open source, apply them in our businesses and apply them in other areas and think about how do we collaborate to create higher level 
uh, technological advancements versus how do we protect IP to protect profits for the near term. It's much more longer term thinking and it's gonna drive a whole lot more innovation. You see a lot of sparks coming out of open source projects and then absolutely changing the world. Kubernetes is a great example of that. I would even go so far to say as a lot of the advancements we've seen in AI just in the last several months have been uh, really driven by open source type of projects. And there's a temptation to try to drive those into proprietary models. But at the end of the day, we've seen open source and collaboration be a model that only keeps raising the bar and cre keeps creating more value for society and for your business. This is an exciting time in our industry. Blake Shiver from Red Hat, thank you for being with us today and sharing your insights. Thank you for having me.